Here's a video to help you review section 4.3 in our book, which was basically just getting comfortable with notation of what's called a definite integral. When you're looking at a definite integral, what you'll notice is the boundary limit numbers. We call them like the lower and upper limit of integration or the lower boundary and upper boundary of integration. And all we were doing in 4.3 was just getting a visual representation of a definite integral. And then instead of using calculus, using more of a geometry way of finding the area. So looking at basic shapes like triangles, rectangles, squares, trapezoids, semicircles to identify the area once we establish what the region is. So that's what we're going to do here and this is just like the end of your quiz. We're going to figure out what the region looks like and then when we're done we're going to use geometry to figure out the area. So the first one is the definite integral from 1 to 3 of 2x. So we want to draw the equation 2x. 2x is a line that goes through 0, 0 and it has a slope of 2. So going up to right 1. And I'm really just going to draw it from the origin because you'll notice that I'm starting at 1 and I'm going to 3. So here is the region that I'm going to find the area of geometrically. This is the representation of the definite integral. So now the question is what is the area of that region? It is a trapezoid. Uh, I know some people like to split it up into a triangle and a square and you're perfectly fine doing that. I am going to use the trapezoid since we use the trapezoid in other parts of this chapter. So the formula of a trapezoid is one half the height. The height is the distance between the parallel pieces, so that is two times the length of the bases. The length of the bases, and this can be found either on your picture or you can see, well, if I put 1 into my original function, remember my function is 2x, if I put 1 in there I get a height of 2, so that is the first base, and if I put 3 in I get 6 for the second base. So then you don't have to worry about the accuracy of your picture, you can use the function to help you. So half of 2 is 1, 1 times 2 plus 6 is 8, so my answer is 8. If you want to write a unit, we just say square units because it does represent area. We don't have any other, we'll never deal with like feet or inches or anything in these type of problems. So that's the first example. Second one, our definite integrals goes from 2 to 6. Our function is the function 3. That is a horizontal line with a height of 3. So that gives me that top boundary. It's going from 2 to 6. I have to extend this a little bit. It's going to go like this. So here is your region that you're working with. It is a rectangle, and with our rectangle, it's just length times width. So it has a length of 3 and a width of 4. So it's 3 times 4, giving me an area of 12 square units. Just looking at the different dimensions, I knew it was 4 because it went from 2 to 6, and I knew the height was 3 because it has a horizontal line of y equals 3. Next one is the definite integral going from negative 2 to 2. This particular function you should recognize as the formula to find a semicircle. Semicircle with radius 2. So I'm going to put my points here at 2 and at negative 2. So this is the visual representation of that definite integral. My circle is pi r squared, but it is half of a circle, so 1 half pi r squared. My r is 2. So I get 1 half of 4 pi, which is 2 pi. You do not need to multiply the pi through. I'd actually prefer if you leave it like that. And again, square units. The last one's a little more challenging, similar to what you'll see on a multiple choice question. The function this time, instead of being kind of one of our singular functions, it's made up of a piecewise function. So it's going to take a little bit of work, and we're really going to have to extend this graph a little bit so we can see it. In addition to that, we have to get a picture. We also have to find the area. So when I look at this function, I know that going up to 4, so from... Uh, you can see that this function is starting at 0. So from 0 all the way to 4, it has a height of 2. So it's going to look like this. But then once we get to 4, we have to see what it's going to look like at that point. I know it's a line. I know it's a line that has negative slope. It has a y-intercept of 10. I guess my biggest thing I want to check is what happens at 4 to see if I even have continuity issues going on. So if I plug 4 into this bottom function, I get negative 2 times 4 plus 10 which is 2, which is great. That means that this is a point where the one piecewise part ends and where the other one starts. What that means is that if I go with a negative slope, it's going to look like this. Actually, it should be a little sharper. It should go down a little more like that. We get a trapezoid. It doesn't have to be drawn visually perfect because we can use our equations to help us here. So the question wants to know what is the 
Um, what is the graph going to look like? And then finally, what is the area going from 0 to 6? So we need to figure out what my trapezoid picture looks like. Now, the one thing that we do want to look at, if we put a 6 in, if we put a 6 into the original function, we actually end up down here. So this is kind of a little bit of a trick function. This will really help you on the bonus part of the quiz, and it's also going to help you a little bit on the multiple choice part. So this is a great question. It's a challenging question because of what's going on visually and some of the discussions that we haven't even had yet, but, we'll have, but we've had a little bit of discussion when we talked about homework. If I want to find that integral, a couple things are going on. We have a trapezoid that is above the x-axis, and then we have a very small triangle that is below the x-axis. Now what you'll have happen with a problem like this is your area that is underneath the axis will actually be considered a negative area, which sounds kind of strange because we don't, you don't think of an area as negative, but it will cancel out with the part that is above the x-axis. So really what's happening from, if you put, for example, 5 in there, this is the point, it's a little off um, scale. If you put 5 in to x, you end up getting 0, so that's where it crosses over. So what happens, this is a bad picture, but I'm going to kind of draw it off to the side. I'm going to kind of draw this little picture here. This is what you have. You have a rectangle. You have a rectangle that is 4 by 2, so it has an area of 8. And then you have this triangle and this triangle, which are identical triangles. One is above the axis, one is below the axis. When you consider those areas, those areas will actually cancel out. They have the exact same area, but one has a location above the axis and one has a location below the axis. This is really getting into things that we're going to look into much further in the course as far as what a definite integral means in, in, in terms of location. But we consider that location as being almost a negative value that cancels out. What that means is the answer to this question is 8. Because no matter what the area is of the triangle, you could go ahead and find it, you're going to get a positive one. It's going to cancel with this, the, the region that is below it with a negative one, leaving you with just that rectangle. So this kind of takes you in a couple directions. When you're looking at one of the problems on the quiz with the model of choice, it's going to have a problem that's entirely in, in above the axis. It is a, a piecewise function, so you're going to have to take the time to look what shape is formed and then find the area. But when you're looking on the bonus to questions like this, you're now starting to look at location and looking at things above and versus below. There's a homework question like this as well. And really start to figure out the things that are below and above, considering the things that are below as being negative and above as being positive to give you that final answer to your definite integral.